we're talking about religion and how religion can weaponize a large mass of people uh, and, and it can be used to a horrible extent to inflict violence and at the same time it can be such a beautiful teacher. I know you worked on this up until the last minute, down to the wire, but what led you to say, okay, it's done, I'm letting it go and, and releasing it to the public? It's really hard. You know, my dad, who's a man of very few words, there's an Indian quote that he told me by this philosopher called Tagore. I'm gonna mess it up right now, but it's, it's something about, I've spent many days stringing and unstringing my instrument, mm -hmm. and the song I came to sing remains unsung. Something like that. Yeah. And I was like, God, Dad, I get you, man. Like, I gotta, I gotta sing this song. I gotta let it go. Mm -hmm. um, and and and, it's the biggest leap of faith when you finally are just like, you know what? It's not perfect, but it's me. It represents me in this moment in time in history, mm -hmm. warts and all. And here you go. And um, yeah, it was truly humbling that response at South by. So it was pretty magical. Um, yeah, I know. I saw the video where you know you're almost moved to tears just seeing everybody's yeah, reaction. I did. I did cry. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, <laughs> um, it couldn't help it, man. I was. I felt. Is you feel so raw out there, and, yeah. and and the response was just magical. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you're essentially your child that you've been raising for these past few years. And what was that? If you don't mind sharing, what was that post production process like? Like, how long did that take you to finally? reach that point, you know, where you said, okay, I'm done. I mean, it was hard because, you know, we we shot the film during the pandemic. Um, there was a lot of issues, you know, even just like getting the editor in with border closures and stuff. So there was a lot of like stops and starts to the process. And so we never really got a good run at anything. And then, um, you know, the studio that first acquired it, you know, you know, they hadn't, they, they didn't really know what they'd bargained for, you know, when they saw a few clips of the film, you know, the actual film itself is like, it's a lot denser and it's a lot, I mean, it's saying a lot, let's just say that it's not your usual, you know, you know, action scene on page one and then you continue fighting nonstop. It's, it's, it's trying to do a bit more. And, um, and, and unfortunately, you know, we got dropped by the studio and that was tough. So it was just sitting there gathering dust. I went off and did some short films with Wes Anderson and all this other stuff. And I was kind of like ready to let it go, which was tough. And then um, out of nowhere, Jordan Peele swoops in. We get on this Zoom call mm -hmm. and he's like, I've seen this thing three times. Wow. He saw me as a filmmaker. He saw the pain I'd been through. And he's like, you know, I understand what you're doing here. I understand how you're trying to bend the genre and trying to infuse it with culture and infuse it with representation. And that's what we're about. And he's like, I hope you don't mind. I've shared it with Universal and we're going to buy it. And I literally like, I fell off my seat. And, and, and then we kind of had this like really accelerated process of editing. And mm -hmm. I got to finish the film and, and, and do it correctly. And that was really amazing. But you're living the life, bro. But we're rolling with the kings now, huh? <laughs> they don't even see us. They're all up there living. I stuck here in this. That's no life, bro. You know, you talked about how the film is a little denser, and you know, you are you went all the way in with really calling people out. I loved seeing the way that you called out, you know, political and religious leaders, and just the oppression that a lot of the poor and working class face. And I wanted to ask you, what gave you the confidence to say, "I need to share this message. I need to to make it in a way that's." digestible for people because you know people are gonna yeah. watch an action film and then they're gonna leave kind of almost having a call to action to dig deeper into a lot of these issues yeah i mean you know we i produced a documentary that i'm so proud of called to kill a tiger and it's you know uh, basically about violence against women you know against a young girl in this case it's a horrific act of violence you know a girl getting gang raped in a village in india and it's a magnificent piece of filmmaking that I'm humbled to be a part of. But like, you know, even with the Oscar nomination, they didn't even have a distributor. But like, it's hard. F I want more people to access these stories and they don't. And I was like, okay, how do I get the middle of America? How do I get those guys that play those video games and the young men, you know, you know, the, the people that are doing could be potentially on the wrong side of history. How do I get them to watch this? and 
and and and and feed them vegetables through a sort of tr entertaining Trojan horse, so it doesn't feel like a, a lesson in, in in politics or morals or whatever. And for me, you know, I grew up watching Bruce Lee as a kid with ADHD and and super hyperactive. Martial arts taught me a lot, made me a good actor or a decent. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a good actor. <laughs> Jesus, chill out, Dev. But you know, you, you got are, me where yeah. I am. No, no, no. <laughs> but but you know. I was like, you know, I can use the genre, a genre that I love so dearly to talk about the caste system. It's baked in, you know, you work your way up until you, you know, you find, find a bigger and bigger boss. So we can, this guy can infiltrate this club, you know, be with the underdogs at the bottom, then, yeah. you know, enter the land of kings amongst men and then gods and, and, and talk about religion and faith and politics and, and identity um, and trauma. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it came from a place of rage too you know, against what, what was happening in India and happens everywhere, really. Um, and, and that was infused when I was, was, was writing it, you know. And were you ever worried about just what that backlash could be, given that it is so unapologetic in the way that it's delivered? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows? But, you know, I, I, uh, I just got to tell the story. You got to tell the story. And, 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 you know, from the response I've been getting, the, the people that, people have been really gripping onto it and understanding those little tendrils of like philosophy and th those things that mean a lot, you know, mm -hmm. you know, we got the Hijra community, the third gender in India in there, you know, we, we, you know, we're talking about religion and how religion can weaponize a large mass of people uh, and, and it can be used to a horrible extent to inflict violence and at the same time it can be such a beautiful teacher you know t t in particular to a child who's grown up in a forest uneducated the iconographies the stories the morals of right and wrong and courage you know there's this duality to it and at the same time religion you know has become so stifling and restrictive and you look at these old temple carvings in india and like it was so much more free and open and 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 and, and radical in a way so, yeah, I'm just, I'm putting out my findings, you know. And can you talk a little bit about, I mean, you did just now just a bit, but just the balance of, while also criticizing weaponization, monetization of religion, you're also almost bringing, introducing these other deities and these other um, yeah. characters that other people outside of South Asian culture might be unaware of. So what, where did you kind of find that balance and why was it yeah. important? for you to include that? I think when I first went in to try and pitch to these financiers, I was like, I think I want to make a revenge film about faith, you know, and all of its facets. And I think the lead in this story is grappling with his faith. You know, like, has he has he been cursed with the history that he has? Or is it, are those scars actually, in fact, a blessing? And, and, and can he turn that trauma into triumph? So, you know, that was kind of the genesis and, and when I looked at these old Indian mythological stories, I saw a lot of like parallels to iconography of like Superman, you know, splitting his shirt open to reveal his magical S, like Hanuman was depicted thousands of years ago with that and flying, holding a mountain. And, and you, know, you know, there's these statues in India that are half male, half female, you know, and, um, and, I, and I just was fascinated by that duality and like how we could create a law that's quite frankly, really cool, mm. um, but also quite beautiful and, and, and overlooked, you know? Anyone who talks outside these walls, anyone who forgets their place, doesn't turn out well for them. Understood? Understood. And I wanted to ask you as well, because I know that your mom took you to your first Skins audition. Yeah. Also, you went with her to the Oscars. She accompanied you <laughs> there. What was her reaction to you saying, I want to step out. I want to, you know, direct my first um, feature yeah. film, just knowing the impact she's had. Yeah, she she actually, to be honest, didn't. she was like, she didn't understand what this whole directing thing was. Mm -hmm. And she was very upset that I hadn't been on, on the screen in a while. <laughs> And she's like, why aren't you acting? What are you doing in this dark room? And, you know, I brought her in and she was like, you know, when is, you know, and I was like, mom, trust me, like, you know, stay, stay the course. And, and mm -hmm. but I'm infusing all of my ancestry and my love of my parents and the mythology that my grandfather and my dad told me and my love of my mother mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know she is you know the mother and this is like you know his idol his best friend you know and god forbid if anything was to happen to someone like that you love so dearly like how far would you go and, and what would you feel but um yeah since south by and stuff like that i think i think she's come around yeah. <laughs> she hasn't seen the film yet oh, okay so let's see what she thinks oh yeah, no. <laughs> that's always intimidating yeah, yeah.